but start can you introduce yourself so tell me your name your major and your class again yeah so my name is katie samfield i am class of 2023 and i am a history and educational studies double major museum studies minor my favorite museum is probably the natural history museum um I'm not a person who like knows a lot about natural history, but like since I was a kid, just before I even like started reading stuff in museums and just kind of looked at everything, there was so much to see and explore there that every time I go into DC, DC like that's the one I want to go to. You can see animals, you can talk about plants, the geology is always really cool, and it is a little more hands-on there too compared to other museums, which I like. Um, I'm not someone who likes all the touchy museums, but it, there's just so much there to see. Yeah, so I've actually been a volunteer with the Smithsonian for about two, two and a half years now in their educational department. Um, I originally did it as a requirement for History Honor Society in high school and fell in love with it entirely. So when I realized that they did have a museum studies program here that was a minor, I jumped on it right away because everything I do kind of ties into it also. So just another way to get into the museum education field. So I volunteer with the Discovery Station program which is a informal education based system where there's a bunch of stations that are on the museum that connect to objects but aren't directly the objects. There are a few that are. Um, so it's a way to get people asking questions about stuff in the museum, learning something new and making those connections that they otherwise wouldn't get and it's really good for kids who are just like learning see planes and are really interested and parents who are always looking to learn something new. Um, favorite stations I work with are the Wright Brothers station. Which we, we actually got rid of that this past year because we lost the flyer to the Army Museum. Um, and then I work with the Space Shuttle spacesuit a lot. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. You're interested in working in history museums after college, I think? Yeah, I'm looking into history museums. I'm trying to get my in into the Air and Space Museum yeah. just because I know the department a little more. I've really liked what they do there. Um, otherwise, I'm not really sure. I'm still kind of exploring my options in that sense. And then if museum education doesn't work out, I want to teach history. Yeah. So at the end of the day, goal is just to teach. So what's your experience been like working with an art museum, like working with artists? And it's been challenging. Yeah. Um, I've never been one to really sit and think of art in an abstract sense. I've definitely been one of those people that's just kind of been looking at it and going, oh, that's really pretty, that's really cool. So it's kind of really challenged my thought process and my boundaries in a way, just thinking outside of the box a little more, thinking about it in different contexts, understanding a lot more of the background that goes into it. Um, I will say it's been enjoyable and I've had a new appreciation that's gone into it, I think, and I'm looking at art in different ways now because of it. Mine's definitely got to be the tonal sound behind it. I'm a big music person. I've been playing since fifth grade, so later than most people, but I, ha like, I have had an appreciation for that for a while, so I do notice a lot of the different nuances. So hearing it for the first time, I just remember getting goosebumps and being like, Shannon did this. <laughs> um, so I know like that's been the biggest thing for me to play into is like we talk so much about the video, but the sound is such an important factor. Like every time I hear it, I just get excited. I do listen to it fairly consistently. The video Dr. Barkin sent us on all the time. <laughs> like what you feel isn't the video, it's the sound that you hear. And you don't think about sound as much. You're always gonna think about the video, but like if you watch a movie with no sound, it feels weird. Yeah. Cause it's that like subconscious connection you're making and like how your body reacts to all of it isn't what you see, it's like, the tension you get from what you hear. Yeah, so actually being home during installation week, I did spend a lot more of my time trying to figure out programming when I wasn't really watching installation because there wasn't much I could do with it at home. Um, I did look into a lot of the text, so it's just having people to work on different things at once, I think, helped because I don't know what we would have done if we didn't have you guys here working on installing the piece. Um, so it also gave me a like, different appreciation for like just the different roles people might have and not everyone has to be doing the same exact thing and I had the realization when I came in because I painted after the week um, I did the feet on the walls and like that realization that like if I was here we'd all have spent less time in the installation than you guys did so I was just like you know what I did some more at home I did some more text I just had a different side of things so I don't think I lost any of the experience. I only really helped for the people who were here in a way. 
Um, I miss not installing. I was really excited to do that, but um, it's it's okay. Yeah. So. Well, huge silver lining. Huge silver lining. <laughs> I I've loved working with Shannon. I haven't like worked with her a ton directly. I know because I wasn't here for the week of installation, but we have met over Zoom a few times since then. And just getting to talk to her one-on-one -on -one with a lot of her intention, a lot of her thought process, and then a lot of my takeaways with it, and just like working through a lot of those details has been really rewarding in a way. And I have seen her art in a different way after talking to her. And I know like trying to continue the conversation with her, really talk to her about what I'm doing with other departments right now and saying, hey, this is what they take out of it. And just kind of expanding that connection. But it's, I think for a good first art piece that I'm helping install, it was probably the best option. <laughs> I am working on a podcast series that was working to bring in the different disciplines into the Berman. Um, I've already worked on an episode with Shannon. I'm actually going to do it again with her because we both missed some stuff that we wanted to talk about. Um, but the goal is to play into a lot of campus life. We always talk about how everyone makes connections. There's so much that interacts here that I really want to play into that really, really well with what the Berman does. The Berman really does play into it, but they don't extend enough, I think, to these different branches. So I'm hoping that with Strata and the very prominent connections, talking to the environmental department about what the Athabasca oil sands are and then tying it all to what Shannon did, talking to the digital art community and seeing what they can say, um, just to really bring out the interest that campus has and show them like this is more than just an art museum. Like I've seen it because I've worked here. Like I didn't have that thought before. And now that I've gone through the process, like I understand so much more and I really want people to see that too. All right, awesome, thank you. All right, thank you. Bye.